Good afternoon, Lion Golf Academy members, guests, and the Reddit community. Welcome again to Reddit Swing Analysis, and this is episode eight, I believe. So thank you for the support. I'm continually getting uh, videos to review, and it's a great uh, honor for me to look at your swing and see what I can offer my advice for. Now keep in mind, this is just my advice. I wouldn't take this to heart unless you're working with somebody that can also see some of the things. And if you're not working with anybody, I highly suggest you go and get some personalized instruction because that is truly the only way to make a difference. Uh, but let's get right off the bat. We have Liam up first. Uh, Liam is a lefty, which is great to see. Um, uh, I can always flip this video around and make it easier <laughs> for the righties, but I always like looking at left-handed swings. So what we're going to do is just take a look at his motion in full swing. Okay. And on his notes, he didn't really put anything on his notes. He just wants to me to review it. So I'm just going to look at it just by a, obviously, I don't know your history. I don't know your range of motion. I don't know your goals. I don't know what your ball flight is. I'm just looking at what I see. Um, if I were looking at it just strictly from a swing point, I'll point out a couple of things that I see that you might try and work on. But however, keep in mind, not knowing your goals, not knowing your ball flight, not knowing you know what you're looking to accomplish, Seriously, take this with a grain of salt. <laughs> Don't start applying it unless uh, it meets your, your ideology too. Uh, off the bat, we can see, you know, definitely a little bit of pigeon toe, but that's okay, it limits your turn. Uh, however, I see a lot of sliding back to your, your left side, um, almost unnecessary sliding. And that leaves you in a position here where you're really behind the golf ball. So if you take a look at where your head is at this point, you know, you've got this you know, great lead left leg or excuse me uh, your right leg is going really well but then you've got this you know this angle that's really kicking over this is more almost for like a driver at this point because they can swing back up so you have to hit the golf ball from this point so you have to start leaning into it take a look at where your head is it's moved well off the golf ball giving you this uh kind of a broken lead side um that could that could result in a lot of thin shots and heavy shots maybe ball contact could be affected too pushes pulls uh, draws, fades, I mean, it, it can do a lot from this point. Uh, you do a really good job, though, of getting that, you know, club out in front of you, up in the air. It's nowhere near parallel, so it's in relation to your turn. It's pretty close. You see that that's a club shaft in your turn. It's pretty close, so really good job there. Hands are nice and wide. Develop a lot of potential power. I just see this little top position as creating some issues for you. As you start your first move, you kind of have to slide back into where you were, and now your momentum's going, going. It's not going to stop. So you try your best to deliver that power. You did a really good job here. The lower body's getting kind of breaking away from you. So you get a lot of this tilting action with your, your knees, which will cause your upper body to start tilting back almost unnecessarily with an iron. Um, and you can see it just looks very you know, collapsed, where I would prefer to see that trail side or your left leg be a little bit more sturdy so you can kind of pivot around there and then not get so tilty at impact and as a result you have to really flip your hands through to time this so that that finish position just looks a little bit concerning uh, with the amount of pressure that has been built up in this region here um, and you're, you're kind of trying to absorb that region by breaking down your left knee so uh, i would definitely just from this side work on that kind of swaying motion and you can see how much your, your left side flips around too. look at that heel it comes all the way around it looks painful <laughs> I mean for me that, that looks like I'm gonna uh, pop a uh, some sort of joint in my, in my foot so just be careful with that um, you do a, a fairly good job of you know routing it back and through but that just looks like a lot of work for especially an iron shot we're trying to hit down and anytime your shoulder gets so tilted impact you're no longer really hitting down um, you're just kind of scooping it to save from going underneath it. Uh, but let's take a look at the back, see if that changes our minds on a couple things here. Okay, here we have leans um, down the line. What I did before is just to add all these lines. So you don't have to watch me, you know, make them visible, take some time. But let's look at your motion overall here. Hey, you do a pretty good job. So what I'm looking at is just maintaining your spine angle through impact, which you, you can see you do a really good job. You're coming up into it just a little bit, but that could be that lean forward that's giving the perception of you moving closer to the ball. And I'm assuming it's lean forward because you're still on your spine angle. And you can see the exit path of your club comes a little bit high. 
Um, but you can also see as you take that club back, really good position here. Club face is a little bit open to your spine angle, and that's fine because you're relieving some pressure on your lead side by doing that. Um, arms maybe get a little bit lower. They should be right there, but here they get a little high. So I'd be interested to see your, your spin rate um, because of that. You're trying to get your, your club, you can see your club's a little bit laid off to try and get it close to that, that slot. But you know, this is all just you figuring things out as you go along. You do a pretty good job of getting it in the slot right here. Club goes right through that uh, left bicep, which is right where you want to be. Club's a little bit higher than it needs to be in, in terms of your plane. So club shaft should be pointing a little bit close to that golf ball. It's pointing a little bit above it. And pretty good there. So you do a really good job of, of figuring things out based from these little tiny things that, that are just out of out of position. Now, again, this is a touchy one because I don't want to start giving you advice because I just don't know much about your swing. I don't know much about your ball flight or anything like that. I can imagine that you hit a lot of thins and heavy shots when you do miss them. Uh, when you time the swing, I'm sure you're a pretty solid player, but it's just that motion back and forth makes it a little bit more hard to time, you know, consistently. You might play, you know, 14 good holes and have four holes that are just, where did this come from? Or you might play really well for a few rounds and then all of a sudden it kind of disappears for a few rounds. And that's typically a sign of somebody that has, you know, some compensation move that requires timing. So I imagine if you hit a lot of golf balls, you're probably a pretty deadly player. But if you tend to not hit a lot of golf balls, it might take some time for you to get your timing back versus somebody that doesn't have as many moving parts, doesn't require as much um, upkeep. So I hope that helps. I uh, don't want to get too deep just because I don't know much. But from my point of view, I just work on that swaying so much and just stay more centered. Remember, that's the bowling ball. Keep the bowling ball more centered so it doesn't require you to get your hands involved in impact. But hopefully that helps, Liam. I'm going to take a guess where you're from. I've been pretty biased to, to say anywhere in the States, so I'm just going to throw this out there. Somewhere in either South Canada or I'm just going to throw this and put it in the British Isles. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let me know. Let's go off to the next one. Okay, so next we have Mark. And now Mark, he said he's a self-taught 10 handicap golfer. He started playing consistently after eight years of not playing too often. Uh, picked up a few swing tips on YouTube and this is my swing after two months of changes. He's using a seven iron, his natural shot was a fade, but since the changes, he's begun to hit a slight pull or a draw. Wonder where to go f here f to improve accuracy, consistency of my swing. Okay, so. Let's take a look here. So this is a, it, it, you know, I appreciate the down line angle. It's just a little bit tough to see where everything is in relation to planes. It's not quite far enough back. So when, when you send me some videos, make sure it's at least, you know, eight or nine feet back. And if you can put the camera a little bit higher, just so we can see the relative of your, of your uh, plane lines and what the club's really doing because what it appears to do here, you know, it looks like you're taking that club way outside to in, but if you, I bet you if you pull that, that camera back and shift it a little bit, it'll be closer to your plane line. But already, you know, just by looking at it, it looks like it's a little bit of a, of a little outside to in motion. And then you do a pretty good job of dropping it back in. Yeah, I can see it's a little outside in. So from this point of view, the, the club is really flying outside at that point. But I'll bet you if you pull the camera back and just arrange it a little bit straighter, um, you can, it's probably a little bit outside the end. But I can see why you get the occasional pull just by that motion. Um, pretty good though, I mean, for a self-taught player, it's pretty impressive. And the reason I say that is just, there's not a lot of moving parts. It's just very, um, I think alignment issues might be, might be causing you some, some concerns. It's just really hard from this angle. But that first takeaway, I mean, you can, you can see the club head is going well outside of where the hands should be. So that's either too much tilt that's causing that, that position, or your arm path is starting to separate from your natural turn. So maybe, I don't want I, I'm not a fan of this drill, but you know, putting the towel underneath that right, the right elbow to try and get used to that, but don't take a full swing because that creates a lot of issues, mainly for this position. So feel like that right arm is tucked a little bit closer to your body 
let's not start putting the towel in there, scratch that. Just feel like the, the right arm is a little bit closer to the body to help get that club more inside on the takeaway. Uh, the club face, it's a slightly shut to your spine angle, that's okay. Top position, I love that bowed wrist, that's ready for power. Yeah, you can see the club's just a little bit laid off. So I think there's just a issue with your first two feet of your takeaway. Feel like the club's going more behind you. So your hand path, <coughs> excuse me, your hand path should feel like it's getting closer to this right thigh as opposed to getting further from the right thigh. See how there's that room that starts close and that room gets further? Just maintain that, that width. So maintain that same spacing to the halfway point. So right when the clubs are parallel, make sure the hands are just as close to the, the thighs as they started. That should help you with the plane. Uh, but other than that, you're, you look pretty steady. You know, there's not a lot of moving parts. You don't go up and down too much. But let's take a look at the front and maybe that'll help us out. So here is your front. All right, let me just take a look here. Okay, fairly neutral grip. Yeah, I can see it from here too. So definitely the arms are going away from the body as you take that club back. Instead of just feel like they're, they're getting pulled inside a little bit. That should really help you just by that motion here. Little bit of swaying to the right side. Close club face. Swaying back to impact. Do a really good job of clearing though. I mean, that's a beautiful impact position. Hands are nice and straight. I mean, that, that wrist is straight. It's not cupping under or bowing into it. So. Pretty solid. Look at that compression of the golf ball. You can see it changed into a little egg there. Really good camera, by the way. <laughs> it's probably probably just an iPhone, but it's pretty impressive how that does that. So you can see the difference here in your follow through. So that's a really good follow through. So the, the arm path and the follow through, it's nice. It's nice and close to the body. The body's turning. Hands are just kind of holding on. So if we can get that same motion that you do on the way back and just implement it on the way here. So see that gap between your right elbow? See how it's, all of a sudden you can see that, that space in the cloud? Just get it a little bit tighter. Have, have it follow your turn instead of separating it because you do a great job of following your turn post-impact. Look at that, there's no space, no, no gap. So get that same motion on the way back and I'm sure that's gonna cure a lot of your issues. Uh, secondary issues for me is just not a lot of swaying going on. So if I draw that little, you know, I right over the golf ball, it looks fine. As you take that club back though, I did it again. Sorry guys, I have to remember this. Okay, as you take that club back, you can see your head kind of shifts away from it. So that could create some issues with moving back and forth. So that could also affect your plan and your club face. So two things for you, just focus on the right elbow, getting more into the golf ball as you turn. Just follow your turn, don't separate so much. And then the second thing is just stay more centered. And let me know how that goes. Um, but other than that, it's a pretty pretty solid move, especially for, for homeschooled. Um, I'm gonna look at your trees in the background. You know, I'm going either for Oregon, Washington, or somewhere in Canada. I know that's a, a big, big range, but let me know if that's close enough. But hopefully that helps, Mark, and I will just follow up. Let me know how it goes. Okay, next we have Morgan. Sorry, I had to like look around. Now let me see. No swing notes here. Just as down the line, face on. Talk about whatever you want. All right, perfect. Whatever I want. Let's take a look here. Okay, pretty simple motion. Not a lot of moving parts, which is nice. I see a little disconnection of the arms and hands on the way back. Right here, you can see the arms kind of keep going and get closer to the body. So limiting your turn, so maybe opening up your hips a little bit more on your backswing might help you. You can see that, that little, look at your right pocket here. I'm looking at that piece of paper or that tag. It just kind of stops here and then you still try to get your club back further by not turning. So your arms are kind of making up for that lack of turn. So maybe just free yourself up and get a little bit more turn. Uh, that will also help your hand path too. So the same similar thing as, as the video before. You can see your hands are kind of going away from your body as they're coming up. If you get a little bit more initial turn and keep those hands relative to the same distance, that'll get your plane more inside and you can have a deeper, wider turn and you won't rely on your hands and arms on the way back down. So it's a little bit just the reconnecting here as you come down and that's where the arms and hands, you see that motion here, the arms and hands have to make up for that. So 
you've done a really good job of timing it, of getting this down. So the same similar thing that I see could potentially be your issue is the amount of time of practice really affects your playing ability. Whereas somebody that doesn't have as many moving parts and they can keep it more of a bigger turn, more body oriented motion, doesn't require as much practice. Um, and if you take a look at VJ Singh, for example, if you take a look post impact, VJ Singh's right hand almost comes off the club. Now, he is known to practice day in and day out, sun up to sundown, seven days a week, to get to that level that he was, which was number one in the world. And he's still, you know, in his 50s, and he's still a pretty accomplished player, and he can still probably compete on the tour if he wished to. Um, there's a need why he has to practice every single day for 12 hours a day. It's because he has to time that release and he was a very streaky player, so sometimes he would be really consistent, sometimes he wouldn't be consistent, and that's just because his, his motion required a lot of, a lot of practice, a lot of great timing. Whereas somebody that has a very simple motion, doesn't require as much practice, obviously it depends on how good they want to become, but the simpler your motion is, the less things that can go wrong, the less that timing is involved. So just from this point of view, that's what I see. But let's take a look at the front part to see if that changes our minds. A front view, and let's take a look if we see the same similar thing. All right, that's, that's quite a difference. So this is a great example of why we need the two sides. Because you take a look from this point of view, I would say definitely you just need to turn more. I mean, your arm relationship is pretty good from this point of view, uh, but the lack of turn is, is getting your, you know, don't get me wrong, we, I love this position because of the fact it's very connected. So here's what I'm talking about. So there's your shoulder turn. Based on that, your hands should be here. But you see that little extra make that you've done? That's just to help get that club back to a little bit further. I'm sure you feel pretty tight here, which is good. You want to feel that stretch, but I think you can get a little bit more turn to help free you up so you don't have to get a little bit armsy because at some point your arms are going to have to make up for this lack of disconnection. Um, so you, you really want to focus on that triangle to help maintain it longer. Let's see what happens as you come down to impact. Yeah, look at that. So your shoulders at this point are here. Arms should be pretty close to there they, they lag a little bit but not quite as much but look at all this extra that you have to now time so either you have to stop your rotation to allow your hands to pick up or you have to start flipping to get that club head speed to pick up to your to your body let's see which one you do okay yeah I see I see a little bit too much excess tilt to help your hand speed so that's not too bad Hips are a little bit too tilty, which is caused by this guy driving up. I don't know. It's it's a it's a touchy situation with this one because obviously you seem like a really good player with those simplified positions, but I just think you're robbing yourself of potential power and more consistent power. Um, anytime you have that little tiny bit of hand manipulation, not only does it affect your consistency, but also the, the power consistency. So you might all of a sudden hit, let's say you hit your eight on 160 yards, and that's your quote unquote consistent power, all of a sudden you might hit one 146 or 180, oh, excuse me, one, you know, 170. So I think your dispersion could be a little bit off just because of that little motion there. So some of the drills you could try and do is just free up your hip turn on the way back. So instead of feeling a super much, bunch of stretch here, just alleviate that stretch by turning a little bit more and feel like your hands don't have to turn with that, that that extra turn that you do with your hands. So as your body turns, as soon as your body stops turning, just stop your hands there. So your hand position might still be in the same place, but relative to your turn, they're gonna be more connected to your turn. And from that point, you can basically just tilt, turn, and just keep turning instead of having to you know, get those hands to kind of catch up at the end. Um, again, I don't wanna offer you something that <clears throat> might get you off in a, in a different track. So this is just my view. Um, I would highly suggest getting with somebody, you know, see if they see the same thing. You know, if they see the same thing, then obviously, you know, we kind of see the same thing. So it would make sense. But first of all, just give that little turn a try and let me know how it goes. Um, other than that, let's go to the next one. And it's hard for me to know where you're from, by the way. 
somewhere in an office space. If that's your garage, that's a pretty cool garage too. Let me know. Okay, last person we have for today is Narb. So Narb sent me a picture, it's gonna be a video. Uh, I'm assuming it's Narb, it could be Narby, but I'm, I'm just throwing out Narb. Uh, this is a pitching wedge, noticing that a bit too close to the ball and have an inside takeaway. And he only was able to send me it down the line. So let's take a look and see what this is all about. Okay, so distance of the ball looks pretty good, Arb. I don't think you're too close to the golf ball, unless this is something that you've done after. But, you know, I'm noticing the arms are hanging down nice and natural. You know, I'd say maybe, if anything, your feet might be a little close, but in terms of your upper body, it's pretty good. So maybe pull those feet back, you know, two, three inches, so you feel like you're more over the golf ball, um, especially with the pitching wedge. But definitely your takeaway is inside, and you can see those arms, the arms get pulled back, and not only that, but your club also gets pulled way back behind that, that plane line. So just to help you understand, you know, here's basically your plane line, your plane line. Uh, everyone's is different and if you take a look at the arm path to that plane line and I did it once again sorry guys that's that's my New Year's resolution is to remember that okay so if you take a look at your arm path so your arm path is below that plane line which is pulling your club so far inside so from once that is set you have a little bit of rerouting to go along and you try to reroute it, but the club is still coming from the inside. So that's gonna be a little bit tough, especially with um, your longer clubs. You get away with it here, just because it's a shorter club, it's more forgiving, it doesn't require as much reconnection, uh, not much can go wrong versus a longer club. But I could imagine your longer club at this position, you know, your, your, your club face is down here, and that's where you make some contact issues. So in terms of your balance though, I mean, you're pretty balanced, especially for that, that rerouting going on. You try to do your best job. You have a nice follow through based on the momentum. You can see the ball's taking off pretty nicely. It's a slight push with a draw. So it's not bad. Um, but a little bit of rerouting and a little bit of manipulation with the hands. If we can get rid of that, I think your motion will be pretty solid. Body's doing a really good job. So for you, I think a good drill. I like this club on the ground. And I like where it's lying, so try not to put it too much in the center. Extend it further back over here. So you want to move that club, see the butt of the club, you want to put it right on the outside of the heel, but keep it on that same line as your as your alignment. So when you take that club back to parallel, so which is parallel to the ground, this club right here should be pointing over this club on the ground. So it's a lot easier for you to see, because if you can match this one and this one, now all you do is you bring your arms straight up to this plane and then you should be good to go. Uh, you try to get your arms up to the plane, but they're already lowered because the motion has been lower already. So halfway back, check your clubs, make sure this one is matching this one so they're sitting right on top of each other, and then just get the feeling of pulling your arms straight up to that second plane line. You'll, you'll get a lot steeper, uh, which is good with the wedge especially. You wanna get a little bit steeper. Um, and the same goes through with all your clubs. The only thing that really changes is your setup. So with the driver, you're gonna be more, more tilted back, <clears throat> but the same thing applies. Put that club on the ground, make a big turn, one piece turn, match those two clubs up, and then from that point, lift the arms straight up because by keeping the club on that plane and by you moving that club by only your turn, you've already established most of your turn in your backswing. Okay, so hope that helps. If you get a chance to send a front on view, send me a front on view because it's really hard to see your, your motion left to right. But for, in terms of your motion front to back, you look pretty solid. So all things cons considered, pretty good. I think this is a fairly quick correction for you. Now, once you correct it, who knows what's gonna happen? Who knows how your body's gonna react? So that's one more thing too, is, is these corrections is not a set in stone correction. Things change. Um, new things will, will build up based on based on new changes in your swing. So it's like a domino effect. Whatever you change in your swing, there's always a domino effect to that change. And without somebody watching you and understanding the domino effect and could let you know this is a domino effect that will occur, um, we need to address these as they happen and this is how we're gonna address them. It's really hard to you know, apply swing tips that you see on TV or channels or, or <clears throat> even this channel. 
you know, so just be cautious when you work with swing tips. Um, as well as good intention they are, there are some drawbacks to just trying to teach yourself with this type of uh, style. So with that being said, hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm gonna try to do four per video since we're getting so many video requests. So as you, we went from three, it's not gonna be four. So more people, more fun, more swings to look at, and more education. So hope you enjoyed it. If you like this, please spread the word. Um, and also subscribe if you haven't. That really helps out the channel support. Thank you so much. Have a great day and fairways and greens. Thank you.